Hey, how's it going gang? In today's video, I'm going to explain how HTTP requests work in React. And I'm also going to show you two different possibilities to get requests. Basically one, one will be when I click this get post button and the other one will be automatically to load those posts. Now we're not going to use Axios, we're just going to use a simple fetch request. I already used Axios in my React course. Check that one out, it's down in the description below. And also we're not going to use here spinner or some kind of effects, we're just going to use a simple text. So let's just get started by clicking on this get post button, then a text should appear with loading. And after two seconds, the posts, which are a lot of posts, should appear right after that. Now I'm also going to show you the other version where you're just going to reload the page or just load the page and all posts will appear with or without a delay. You can change it up later on. So enough explanations, let's just get into the project. Just make going to make this smaller. I already have a React project up and running here. And I'm going to stop now my previous project. And let's just start here by npm start. And it's going to start the React application, which is just going to be blank. Now, remember, I'm no longer installing automatically React when I'm starting a new video. It's just taking up too, too much time, too much of your time. This is why I'm just creating projects and smashing them right into my projects folder right here. If you don't know how to install and run Re React, I have a really short video, short and simple video down in the video description, or just check out my YouTube channel. Also, the entire code is on my blog, which is also down in the video description. Okay, let's get started by just creating here in the app. Oh, and before that, remember, I already did a previous video where we have this main CSS file. This main CSS file contains all all, as you can see, a lot of my custom CSS. It is on a GitHub repository, which is also down in the blog post in the video description, okay? So definitely download this. You just have to go to GitHub, bang, download the file, throw it into your projects, and you're good to go. After, of course, you link it up. You can either link it up in here, import app CSS, which is just nothing for me right now. I'm just going to create a custom CSS, but download it in your main CSS and create a main CSS and you're in your index. You could either integrate it here or you can integrate it in the app CSS. So I'm just going to integrate it here. I'm going to import and main, whoop, should have a dot forward slash main dot CSS. And you should see just in a couple of seconds change because if I create here an H1 with the title, I also change this one into React. So I'm going to create here between those two fragments an H1 with a class of title. And I'm going to write in here HTTP requests. Then you should see something like this over with margin added to the top. If I take out this H1, or if I take out my main, comment out my main import, you're going to see this default style. Okay, so this means that the main style is taking effect. Now let's continue on with our project. First things first, I'm going to create here a button tag with a class of PTN. And it's just going to have a simple on-click option later on, but we're just going to type in here, get posts. Okay, there's a button, already style applied to it. And also you can wrap this into a container, say div with a class name of container. It's just going to add a bit of margin and padding to the, to the sides. Now, right after the button, I'm just going to create a UL and I'm going to type in here posts. Okay, so the, there is where our post should appear. But first we need to get our posts. And because using React, we need to add them to a state. So I'm going to create a const and add them to a state of data and also the setter function, which is going to be set data. And then we're going to assign this to use state, which is a React hook. And we're going to throw them all, everything that you type in here into state. You can either assign it to a variable. In our case, we are going to assign the state, so the data to an array. So we're just going to type in here a empty array. And also you need to bring in state. So you're going to import use within curly brackets state and if you don't understand use state i have a great video where i explain use state and use effect so on so on so i'm going to import use state from react of course from the react library okay so the error should be gone okay now let's talk about http requests a http is, is a protocol that allows you to send and receive data over the internet so when we're going to click this get post button it should send me from the internet some kind of data and http so http stands for hypertext transfer protocol basically just what i explained it transfers protocols over the internet but it transfers text so basically json and in order to transform that json text into 
data, I'm going to show you just in a couple of seconds, we're going to use the fetch and the then functions in our project. Now, HTTP is the foundation of all data exchange on the web, and it is a client service protocol, which means requests are initiated by the recipient. So this is why we're going to use this get post button. And after that, I'm going to show you how you can automatically just load data using the use effect. Now, usually the web browser is the one that is initiating that request. So you do need a web browser. You could also uh, use it in the back end, but you would need to use then Axios and so on. So on. you're not going to do this. You're just going to focus on React. Now, although HTTP is a stateless protocol, which means that the server does not keep any data or state, so don't, does not keep any data, which also is state, between the two requests from the same client. That is why we're going to add our states, add our data into this data state. Now, in order to get our data, we're going to create here a function that's going to call get posts. You can also get, uh, call it get data, but uh, I am going to use a, a database that is on the internet that is free, and this is the JSON placeholder. So if you would go to JSON placeholder, which is this right here, this is a free API that you can basically use to get data. You can also see here, pretty simple example, this is exactly the fetch request that we're going to use. So when you initiate in fetch, you're going to tell it from where the data should be fetched. Then a response, which you're going to get back, needs to be transformed into JSON file. So as soon as you're going to get that JSON file, we're not going to console log it, but we're going to set it to the data. But we are going to console log it for the very first initiation. So you can either just copy that that uh, data from here, but you're not going to use the, the string from here, but we're not going to use to do's. But let me just show you. So we're going to initiate here a fetch request. It's going to request from the API, and the API is on the HTTP column. And HTTP was the old version with out the security. So if you type in S, this means HTTP secured. Now forward slash forward slash another address, which is going to be JSON placeholder. And then we're going to redirect it to dot type icons, or type code and dot com. And then forward slash again, where the data is or what kind of data we're going to extract from there. Now we're not going to extract to do's. You could also get your to do's if you want to try that one out, but I'm going to extract posts. That's why I'm get, calling it get post. So we're going to get our post from here. And then when the data was fetched, we're going to send it. You use here a then. We're going to send it as a response that we're going to get from that in an error function, which again, a callback function. And then we're going to take that response and apply the JSON property to it. But we're not done yet. So extra is going to be transformed as JSON. We're going to use another then. So you're getting the JSON data. But what are you going to do with the JSON data? So again, dot then we're going to take that JSON data. And in our case, we're just going to console log it. So arrow function and console log just for now. Okay. And we're going to pass in the data that we just got. So let's try this out. You going to go back to the project, right click inspect. I'm going to open here up the console, close this up. We don't need it. Now in order to initiate this uh, get request, we're going to take our get posts and go into a button here and on click, we're just going to get our posts. Okay, so let's try this out. If I click here, I should get here the data in our console. Let's click and something went wrong. Fail to fetch because, because, because. Let me just check it just a second. Dot com and oh, I'm missing here an L. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, let me just clear up the console and click here. And there we go. It's returning our data, which is a array. We just got a 100 object array. So basically an array with 100 objects in that. And if you click in here, you're going to see the data return as the very first object from that array, position zero, the body, the ID, the title, and the user ID. Okay, now that we got our data, we should display it somewhere. So again, close up that console, we're going to go down in our post because this is where we want to display our data. So if I just type in here, the data as our state, which we're using up here. And we're going to set the data instead of this console log. I'm just going to copy it, comment out the above console, comment out the requests with the response of console log. And instead of console log, I'm going to set here, set the data to the JSON file that we're getting. And down here, we're going to use that data. Okay. So if I click on get post, 
it should give me an error. Excellent. It's not what I wanted um, because I didn't use here map. So <laughs> we're getting our data, but we need to loop over it. So we're going to use here a map, which is a higher order array method. And we're going to display that data as a post. And we're going to just display here the posts. And from the post, as I just showed, you can get different items. I'm just going to display a post dot, let's say title. Okay, so let's click on get posts. And there we go, we're going to get a bunch of data. Now this is ugly, so we're going to style it just a bit. So instead of post and title, we're going to return here. I'm going to open and close parentheses. And within here, we're going to return a li. We're going to give this li a class name. Now these are my personal classes, so alert. And alert-info is going to give you a blue alert. And also when you're returning map elements, each element should have a key. So we're going to use as a key, we're going to use the item.id or the post. I didn't use your items. Sorry, that was in my previous project. Okay, so we're returning here a bunch of empty data. So let's integrate here in our alert. We're going to start with a div with a class of margin to the right of one. And it's going to have here the post.id. Going to get a bunch of enumerations. And after that, we're going to return h3. And it's going to have the post.title. And after the title, I'm going to also return the body, and this is going to be in a paragraph tag with a class of texts and gray. You can also obviously play around with this and style it differently. And within here, we're going to get our post dot body. Okay, and this should, whoop, not body, body. And this should also give you the, the text within that post. Okay, so pretty simple. Let's do here reload. You're not going to see any kind of data. If you click on post, you're going to get all posts. Now, we could also add a delay here. Just let's simulate that a bunch of data is coming in and is taking a, a couple of seconds. So in our get post function, we have to simulate here that we are loading the data. And for this, first I'm going to create a const of another state, which I'm going to call loading, and then set loading as a setter function I'm going to use here. Oops, I'm going to assign this to use state and just going to set this to false. So just a boolean of false when the project is loaded. This is not going to do anything. Now, right here, when we're going to click in our get post function, we're going to click that get post. We're going to reset that loading to true. So set loading and we're going to set it to true. And then we're going to use our loading data. And then we're going to use our loading state down here. Instead of getting our UL back, I'm going to wrap everything into curly brackets. First, I'm going to call upon our loading state. And if this is true, then first we're going to dis just display here a h2 with a class. I'm going to pack this into parentheses. So h2 with a class name of mt2. This is margin top two. And then we're going to type in here as a text of, uh, the text of loading and dot dot dot. Okay. Now if the data is no longer loading, we're going to use here a column and I'm going to wrap this again into parentheses, then this data should be displayed, which is from here to here, the UL. Now, if I click now get post, I'm just going to show loading. It's going to remain true as long as we're change, as long as we do not not change it. So in order to change it, we're going to use here before the fetch function, a, you're going to use here set timeout function. And within the set timeout function, we're just going to reset the data or the state of loading to false. So set loading, I'm going to reset it to false. I'm going to reset this after two seconds. So 200, 2000 milliseconds. So let's try this out again. If I click on loading, or let me just refresh here. So if I click on loading, it should take two seconds. This is going to appear. And after two seconds, the post should appear. Great. So we just simulated how the data was loaded within two seconds after we initiated the loading process. Now, how about loading this entire thing on the start of the project. So we can use here, now I'm going to actually go up here, a set a use effect hook. So first we need to bring in our use effect hook right after use state, we're going to bring in use effect. And now we can use our use effect hook here, use effect. And I'm just going to copy in this fetch request up here, meaning, and also I'm going to stop the data fetching here, meaning that as soon as we load the project, we're going to get our data. Now, obviously you can also copy this in here, simulating that when the page is loaded, so if I hit save, then you're going to see loading, and then the data will be fetched. Again, if I click on this get post button, the data will be loaded, and 
there we go again. Okay, so simple as that. Again, if you click on refresh, the use effect hook will automatically upon load get us the data. So if I do here a refresh, it's going to first of all load, use this functionality, load the data, and again I'm going to recall the data. You could also rename this into reload and then reload the data. Basically, if some kind of new data was added to the server, then you're going to see it here. So hope you enjoyed the project. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. It's a great way to support the channel. My name is Nova BM. I love teaching web development to you folks. Hope you enjoyed this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you're new here, you're posting new projects on a regular basis. If you want to support me personally, then check out my courses. They are down in the video description. They are also on my website. With this being said, I wish you all a lovely day and catch you next time. Bye-bye.